You know what else is heavily impacted by extreme temps? Electric vehicles. Joining us to talk about how rising temps are affecting our EVs is Greg Morrison with Bumper to Bre Bumper. Greg, thanks so much for being with us. In-house. In-house. Nice to have you here. Thank you so much to be here. Good yeah. to be here. So let's talk about it because a lot of us have been experiencing this heat. Heat waves have kind of led the, uh, the news so far this summer. We know that EVs, you know, cell phones, all of that, all charged by uh, lithium-ion batteries. How does the heat impact our EVs, because I know when I leave my phone out for too long, my it phone says, says, I'm too hot, can't you can't use me. Yeah. Well, the same thing can happen with EVs, but the difference between EVs and your phone is the batteries in EVs have what's called a conditioning system. So as it gets warmer, it almost has like an air conditioner to cool it down, get it down to an operating temperature. And on the opposite side, when it's very bitter, bitter cold, it warms the battery up. Uh, but these conditioning systems only work, for the most part, when the vehicle's plugged in for being charged. That way it can be regulated. The system there is taking, okay, i got a level two charge coming in. I'm going to get this thing at the right condition, mm. do a slow charge up, and then you'll have power to go. Um, the tough part is in places like Phoenix, uh, Las Vegas, uh, Dallas, where it is just blazing hot and people are driving and going all day, the temptation is, oh, I've got to keep this thing charged in case you know, something happens. The real trick is keep it about halfway, between 50 and 70% charge, so that when you park it, the car doesn't freak out because these batteries develop memories. So you keep it in that happy medium, then at night, after hours, plug it into a level two charger and let a trickle charge run and you'll be fine. Has there ever been a headline out there that you're aware of where a car has shut down, not on the charger, not self-regulated, but kind of like your phone will stop? over a period of time before it can work again? There's some anecdotal evidence about that. And quite often it is when the car has been allowed to get below about 20% charge. Okay. And the, this high heat, if it's below 20% charge, yeah, that might happen. That's going to, it's putting too much on the system. Okay. And just going back real quick mm -hmm. for when we charge these vehicles, we want in the heat, you want to charge them during the overnight hours when it's not as hot. Not as hot. Rates are lower. You're not putting as much stress on the grid. Because when you're using a high-speed charger, that's a lot of stress on the grid when you're putting right. 150 to 350 watts at one time. Which generates heat. Thank you. Right. And if you've ever been by one of the uh, level three chargers when, during the middle of the day, you can feel that heat coming off there. In really? fact, the running joke is you could fry an egg on it sometimes. Mm, really? Oh, that's yeah. I didn't realize that. Okay, so let's say that for whatever reason you are poor at planning and you've, <laughs> you've had to end up charging your car during the extreme heat, peak heat of the day multiple times. Is that going to hurt your battery life? In the short term, no. Yeah. Okay. In the long term, it will start to challenge and stress your battery's memory and it's going to cut back on the number of years you can run that battery. Okay. So an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Right. Planning right. ahead. So I always tell people, get up early in the morning or wait till the sun's starting to cool down and just charge or charge overnight at home. Uh, EV charging at home is, is okay for people who have houses, but if you live in an apartment, mm -hmm. then you've got to plan that to make sure that that's done. So right now, when you look at a used vehicle, you mm -hmm. can look at the mileage on it. Right. You could look at, you know, how many wrecks has it been in. If you go to boats, you look at engine hours. Mm -hmm. How do we rate EVs? Is it off of mileage, or do we look at hours that that battery is in use? I would look at hours that the battery has been in use, and the other thing is you want to find out, has that battery ever been pulled and serviced? How, is there, like, a, a, a company out there that keeps track of that? Not yet, but that's a perfect business model. So why don't we go into business I doing know, that? That's what I'm thinking of right now. You know, we can quit this. <laughs> because then you just have to rely on the seller. Oh, yeah, I've taken care of it. No, but uh, that's one of the growing industry opportunities with the advent of EVs. Because you're not going to have as many needs for fuel pumps and water pumps with EVs. So why not be the person who can say, let me tell you what the status of your battery is. Or I have a clean room here. We can swap out certain cells and get your battery going again. And how many, sorry to keep going, but how many hours can these batteries go? Like, I'm just thinking if you could get, I don't know, a, a, a million mile or a million hours on a battery. I'm just throwing out a number. And then let's say it is exposed to heat. Well, that'll drop it now to 800,000 miles. I'm just it's something like that. Um, my frame of reference is the first uh, hybrids that came out. Yeah. They had batteries, remember? Right. And some of them are still running mm -hmm. now 20 some odd years later. Right. So you can get a long life out of them, but you got to take care of it like you do anything else. Right. If you have a car, you put good fuel in it, you take care of it. If it runs on gasoline, if you're running an EV, you got to take care of it and make sure you take care of your battery. Yeah, that, that is, um, it's kind of like you said, a little bit of 
um, prior prior plan. preparation, prior plan, yeah, 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 will be worth it. So let's go back to the heat a little bit. Do you have any advice other than like the charging overnight for dealing with the heat when you're in an EV? Like, should you plan your driving in cooler times? If, if you possible. Can, um, but the other thing is, and this is going to sound a little crazy, uh, really think about where you have to go. Do I have to go into the middle of downtown into that gridlock at 11 a.m. in the morning when everybody else is trying to get in? Or can I have gone in earlier or later when there's less traffic so I can keep the vehicle moving and hopefully get it inside a parking garage? That's 101. And the other thing I'd always recommend for folks to do is to really rethink how hard they push their EVs. I mean, I've driven enough of them to see the folks are blown by me doing 90 miles an hour. Mm. Don't do that to the car. You know, that's also can be damaging to your driver's license status. <laughs> right, that's true. So. so I know in like extreme winter situations, um, thinking like northern tier folks in Montana, right. you can plug in your battery in the cold area to keep it, you know, right. so it can start up the next day. Right. Is, that, is there something like that in the summer that you can do? Not that I know of yet, but that doesn't mean it's not out there because developments are happening so fast, it's hard to keep up with them. Because, uh, like, an overnight low of 97 in Phoenix is still dang hot. Mm -hmm. That's not the word I would use. I'd say it's the opening of the gates, too, but we won't talk okay. about that. Right. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is a challenge. In fact, uh, EVs are not going away. Right. right. Uh, this Friday, VinFast will be opening, will do a groundbreaking for their, their new electric car plant in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And if you look around the southeast, there are probably 15 or 20 battery plants or EV plants coming on. So this technology is developing and evolving. And as it evolves, there are going to be people who say, oh, I can fix that problem right. with this. Right. I can address this problem with that. But we have to be a little patient. It's much like the first days of the automobile in this country. Yeah. Finding gas was a challenge. <laughs> My beer is much happier when it has a koozie in it, so it's like my battery needs something to protect it. I hear summer. you. A yeah. koozie for your car battery. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> That's we have them for our phone now. There. We just we have there. some. Did you get one of those, the Foozies? No, I didn't. They make them for your phone that. now, too. Greg Morrison, thank you so much for your time. As we love having you on. Yeah. That thank was you. so good with Bumper to Bumper TV.